Hi everybody, it's Lenine, always in stitches. Um, it could be maybe Thursday, March the, <laughs> May the 4th. Peter's behind the camera, so everybody say hi to Peter. Um, we've got some peanut gallery behind us, so if you hear any noise or phones hi, ringing. Peter. Yeah, yeah. I have friends in low places. Anyway, sorry it's been a while. I haven't been doing floss tube, but I've come to a decision. I had to think about this really long and hard. No, not really. I cannot be a whip stitcher. These whips in my basket were about to drive me up a wall, which is, if you ask anybody, it's not a far drive. But I decided I'm going to work on two or three things at a time and try to get them finished. A lot of my problem was I make a lot of the um, samples for the shop. And when I work on this for a little while and then I work on this, I'm not getting anything done. So the pattern is a year old and we still don't have a sample. So I'm going to just start working on two or three projects at a time besides the sewing that I do. Um, I do make some of the sewing samples for the shop. Um, I piece like table runners and quilts and things, but then I have people, remember we've talked about people before, I have people that finish them for me. Also, I think I'm close to my one year anniversary. I'm not sure, I meant to look it up, and I think that it, sometime the first part of May, I think we started last year. So I've had a good time doing this, I'm a lot more comfortable behind the camera. Um, you, what you see is what you get. So today we're going to talk about some old previous finishes, and I have two almost finished, they're not, I don't have them framed or anything, but I did get them done over the weekend and some new patterns and some whips and things like that. So, and we're gonna learn about different kinds of linen, like what Newcastle means and what Edinburgh means and what that kind of stuff. So we're gonna um, get a piece of paper and a pencil so you can kind of jot that down. Um, a lot of times you see a piece of fabric or a designer says, get a piece of Edinburgh, whatever, and you're like, what does that, what, and what does that mean? So I'm gonna to try to help you with that today too. So first I'm gonna do some previous finishes and I can't remember from last year if I showed any of these, but it's always a good time to show new ones. Um, I've got two needlepoint. These are old as the hills. This one is from 2003 and I bought it in um, Maine, I think it was in Maine when we went up there one time with some friends and I bought this and it's just a small full coverage needlepoint little doodad and I used to do needlepoint more than I do now it's it's kind of tedious but um, it doesn't go that fast with it being full coverage I think so but that was a cute little I had it professionally framed back in the day and then this was a rooster and poor little guy he's starting to get kind of worn out he's a doorstop mm -hmm. But I made this probably in the 90s. And he's coming apart, but I still love him and he still sits on my shelf. And Virginia wants him, so she likes chickens. Anyway, that's a couple needle points. Um, we have a shop that's well, close. What do they say? Birds of a flock. Oh. Birds of a feather flock together? Yeah, me and Virginia. We're, I'm, she's my bonus mom. No, that chicken. This Virginia. Chicken? Yeah, oh, that yeah. was a comparison. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, get over Run Virginia. around. Virginia's. Run Virginia. around, head cut off. <laughs> Virginia was Martha Stewart before Martha Stewart knew about being Martha Stewart. I'm just saying. We want to grow up and be just like Virginia. Um, I was, oh, gosh, I set it upside down. I was going to say something. It was really important, too. But I can't remember. Oh, it'll come to me. Okay. And now here's another old finish. This is one of the Blackbird. Um, gosh, I think it's Flower Garden. And it was probably done in, I don't know, 2012 or so. And I changed, there were maybe eight of these patterns, and I did five of them, and we had them on display for a while. But this is, I changed part of it to be Cicero, Indiana. That's where we live. So I could cross stitch day and night, night and day, day and night. Day and night. Night and day. So there's that. And then I have one that I might have shown you last year. Longenberger baskets are a big deal in this part of the country, or used to be. Oh, gosh, it's so dirty. That's terrible. But, um, so I had a Longenberger basket that I had bought from somebody, and I had this little patriotic uh, piece done. And I, sorry, I don't remember what it was. But I just sewed some satin ribbon on there, and then it hangs on a um, an old, it's got old, oh, gosh, doorknobs. 
old glass doorknobs. Brett put it on an old piece of trim and, and we hang it, it's hanging in my bedroom. So that was another old finish. Now I'll talk about, oh, my, my almost finish. I don't think I have the pattern for, did I grab the pattern for that? Well, this is an old, oh gosh, sampler from Cottage House Needleworks, maybe. It's February. I finished it over the weekend, and I've got it. They had a frame. This was one of those things where you got it each month, and um, you signed up. We did it through the shop, and they had real pretty frames that went with this. They kind of looked like yeah, meringue. Were. Yeah, they did. Beautiful. Well, that company's out of business. So oh. this was stitched on 32 count Belfast Platinum. It's going to Florida because we're generally in Florida in February. So I'm going to frame it and take it to Florida for my decorations in Florida. I thought I had the pattern, but oh, it's been kind of scattered today. Peter's been bothering me. Na, 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 na. Blackbirds America. I finished it a week ago or so. This took me right out a year with all the other things, the whips and things I was trying to do. Um, this, it was done on 25 count Lugana. And it's an out of print retired chart. You can find it on the secondary market. But it's, you know, it's getting kind of expensive. It's probably $25 or $30 on the secondary market. And maybe someday she'll re-release it. I'm not sure. Okay. Now we're going to talk about whips. I have two because I just finished my February sampler. That was one of my three. And I have a big one. I have two big ones. One of them is a Rosewood Manor, and it's a huge one on a stretcher frame. Wow. And I work on it. I'm supposed to do it this month for our... Um, what are they called this year? Pips? Pips. Pips. Projects in progress for the shop. And I'm supposed to do one square, which the squares are probably eight by eight, and it's all beaded. And oh. It's, I'm not sure. We'll see if I even pick it up. And I also have one that's, um, it's a Mayflower one from, it seems like it's with thy needle and thread, but it's a long piece. And, and I've brought it in a couple of times, and I haven't touched it recently. You know, it gets nice weather out, and you don't want to stay inside. You want to go outside and mess around. And uh, a few weeks ago, we had a, a sort of a family fiasco happen. And they had a um, six-year-old golden retriever. And we got their golden retriever. Um, so we're dogs sitting permanently. What? Oh, looky here. Oh, Cappy's so good to me. Cappy's so good. May 19th, 2022 was my first floss tube. So... The next time, maybe in two weeks, then we can have a floss anniversary with balloons. Can we get sugar cream pie to have? Cake, sugar cream pie. Cake, cake. Oh, sugar cream pie. Will you cake. bake a sugar cream pie for our floss anniversary? I know we've talked about you guys. You gotta. Peter has the sugar cream pie recipe. You guys, if you want to try sugar cream pie, if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's oh really God. easy, and you can use Pillsbury pie crust. You don't have to do what Cappy does. <laughs> I know Cappy's making Pillsbury raspberry. Pie crust. I know, yeah. but if you you know if you're not into pie crusts, I like the little little puppet guy. But we need to have a bake off for our floss anniversary. Oh, so you can take do the taste test. <laughs> that, that was very selfish. Yeah. Okay, Peter, we we understand. <laughs> Uh, sugar cream pie is an Indiana specialty. I found out so. Uh, I found great. out last year, you guys. Yeah, and he's he's lived in Indiana, so my whole he's, life. He's he's slow on the uptake. Okay, I do have two whips that I want to talk, tell you about. One of them is Calendar Crates June from Stitching with the Housewives. Here, and I forgot to iron it this Look morning. Look at all those strawberries. Yeah. I got, this is one of the patterns that I got at Goodwill a couple of months ago, and it was the fabric, the floss, the pattern, all combined. And I think it was $3.99 for the whole thing, and I picked up two of these patterns. So just about got, you know, I've got probably a fourth yet to do. And it's easy, because it's on 14 count Ada, and it goes fast. And uh, my husband and I are watching Suits right now from the, what, 2000s, 2010-ish era the TV show, the series Suits. It's really good! Have you ever watched it? Uh-uh. No, oh I haven't gosh, seen it. Oh gosh, it makes me laugh. 
my daughter Allison, she's getting she's going to law school. She just finished her first year and I said, We're watching suits and she goes, Mom. That's terrible. That's an awful show. It's really a good show. It's really funny. I like it. I like to laugh. And she's, she's, she doesn't know what she's talking about. Okay, so this is a sample for the shop. Oh, I forgot to tell you what that was on. Oh, the other one. Okay, this is Polar Bear Plunge, and this is on 32 Count Lugana. Oh, look at his little face. And it looks like that. And it's Polar Bear Plunge by Hands On Design. Look at that little and face. And we have we have all of the first series. It's like a polar bear and a walrus. I don't remember what the other ones are. A seal maybe. And we also have the Eesh. backing Eesh. boards that um, I believe Chantel from 141 Designs. So this is done on 32 count Lugana Murano spotted. Maybe. So doesn't it look like snowflakes? I think that kind of looks. It like does. Snowflakes. It looks like yeah. it looks like a snow globe. So I started him yesterday. So that's not bad. Wow, that's a lot for one day. Yeah. Way and to I go. even had to unstitch part of it because I wasn't paying attention. Imagine that, me not paying attention. Hmm. Get out the snips. Oh, now I can tell you what this is. Country Cottage Needleworks. I want to show you this though real quick. We still have some of these. They're sampler of the month and this was February and that's what I showed you that it's finished but and the frame was absolutely gorgeous but we don't have any more of the frames. But you're saying that people can still order the pattern. They can get the pattern. You can't get the frame because the, the company is out of business. But that you can still get the pattern. Now we're going to talk about new patterns and then we will talk about um, our different kinds of... Oh and we also have a giveaway. So stay tuned to the end of the video and I'll give you a clue as to how you can win a $25 gift card to Always in Stitches. And it is, you can do it online or you can do it in the store. So, and we also have a personal shopper. Our phone number is 317-776-4227. So just stay tuned and see what, what's up. Okay, this is a limited edition. Happiness is homemade, tried and true recipes shared by needleworkers. This is from the 2023 Needlework Market cookbook. And uh, we got it last week. We got 12 copies. I don't know how many is left. Probably eight copies are left, but they're, they're never going to print them again after these are gone. Because we, we got in on the last printing and um, it's so cute. It's got recipes and charts from different designers. Um, Romy's, let me see. There's Romy's Creations. Oh, Fern Ridge. There was a lasagna recipe. Was there? Yeah. Oh, there's Blackbird, so Alma's participating. But there's all kinds of um, good recipes, and the designers have included a small chart. So I'm all about those charts. Me too. I'm, I like my charts. Okay, we have only a few. Have you started any of the charts that are in, your, mm -hmm. in that? No? Okay. Not yet. Me neither. It's on my list. Me too. You know, I have a list. I do too. I have a big list. I got a bigger list. <laughs> have you cross-stitched lately, Peter? No. So I didn't even bring our witch. I didn't even, I haven't even worked on our witch. So we have just a couple of um, new patterns. Ooh. I don't know what, I must have been sleeping or something because we don't have very many. Here's one of the first ones. You want me to go on the floor and get some? No, this is it. Oh, okay. This is it. Country Spirits Collection Bunny Joy by Homestun LA, Homestun, Homespun LA. Homestun, look yeah, at that Homestun. Yeah, Homestun. <laughs> so this is a cute little bunny for Easter, Bunny Joy. Look at those whiskers. I know. He's oh, got they, a little handkerchief. Oh, yeah. He's got, and he's got a charm. He's got a, is the charm included? Oh, I might have to check on where the charm's at. I'll check and see if I can get the charm and include it with the... He's got an Easter basket charm. And there's some rickrack. Yep. And are those French knots or beads or pens? What's holding on the rickrack? Um, they've used a pen. Yeah. That's cute. I like the way they did that. I, I haven't too. even looked at these yet. I need to do that. I'm kind of I'm kind of behind. Wait. I think they're French knots. You think that? I don't think so. Yeah, French knots. Are you sure? Yep, I got a close Listen up right here. <laughs> Hold on, I'm I'm zooming in for the folks at home. Well, I have. Isn't that awesome? There's French knots on the Rick Rack. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Okay, so uh, okay, I can't. Let me not get distracted. Let's keep doing the new, and I'll tell you something in a minute. Remind me, the Scarlet House Spring Alphabet. That looks like a Chantel I board like on that. the back. Yeah. That's kind of fun. I like that for an alphabet. Yep. 
We have Country Cottage Needle Works Restaurant. This is Big City Christmas. Now, any of these you guys are interested in, we've got them in the shop, and you can call and talk to our um, personal shopper. Today's personal shopper is Deborah. That was a chalkboard. Was for a the cho menu. Oh, yeah, for yeah, the menu. For the menu. Have you been to Debbie's Daughters yet? Uh-uh. Debbie's Daughters is in town, and it's a, it's a bakery and a sandwich place with soup and stuff. It's a bakery? <gasps> and it's in an old house. Is it open on Sundays? I don't know. Maybe. I guess that's Chubby Bunny by Jeanette, Jeanette Douglas. Oh, she does such good she work. She has, it has Chubby Bunny and Chubby Bird, Chubby Bird, I think. I think there's a couple of Chubbies. There's a Chubby Butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> well, if there's a chubby bunny and there's a butterfly, well, there's different patterns. Chubby. No, there's different patterns. She oh. has chubby, chubby different patterns. Okay. Then we have uh, Little House Needleworks. Hello, Sunshine Petites. He's taking them away from me. What's it say? Cross stitch. Oh. Sunshine flowers. I wonder garden, what those are on. And sunshine. It looks like they're on wooden um, price tags. Price tags. Okay. And they're they look like they're bows made out of burlap, like burlap ribbon ribbon tape. Ribbon ribbon with a two hole button. Well, look at that. Mother of pearl, possibly. I haven't looked at these. I'm gonna have to. And the background fabric looks like it's a quilt fabric. Maybe it might be your it favorite designer. Yeah, blackbird. No, your other favorite designer for fabric, quilt uh, fabric. Fig tree. Yes. That or it could be housewives. Could be, but okay. this, I don't know. This is Homespun Elegance, plain and fancy oh, collection, oh sweet cool. berry pouch, etc. Now, look that's at the difference. Cool. This has got long stitches, it looks like. Yeah. They've used long stitches. And this one has used a cross stitch. I like what they made that into for yeah. a put for flowers, a little in, flowers and hang in. it up mm -hmm. with a ribbon. And she's put lace across this one with old buttons. And okay. this one has got, yes, that looks like tatting almost. That would be great to hold lavender because oh, yeah. then it would perfume mm -hmm. the room that you're in. Do you have lavender at your house? Mm -mm. You know, it's really easy to grow, and it, you can't hardly kill it. You should get some lavender and plant it. I grew it one year. I had it in the garden for four years. The bees loved it. The bees love it. It. it, was fun to see the bees. Here's my blackbird lady. Feast of Friendship. It's pretty. And it's just this, um, it's just one um, chart in here. It's not a book. A lot so. of fruit in that bowl. Yeah, there is. I think there's a, wait. Wait, I see, I see a goldfish. That's not see a the goldfish. Fish. You're goofy. There's no, not a goldfish, a goldfish in there. I don't think so. Swimming around. You can see his eye. He's just looking at you. Look, she's got Barb's initials Aww, on there. I like that. Barb made it, might have made it originally. Wow. Okay, one more thing we have in that's new is Stony Creek's Cross Stitch Collection Magazine, Ooh, spring pretty. of 2023. It's got a lot of nice little things in there. They also have, sometimes they have teaching information in here that helps you know what you're talking about. <laughs> Doesn't help me, but. <laughs> Somebody asked the other day, I was watching the floss tube and they asked about stitching in hand. Do you know how to stitch in hand? Nope. I, well, I take that back. I tried it once and then once you try it, you have a real hard time wanting to stitch in a frame. Yeah, because what because I do... Because it's nice and compact. You don't have to travel over the frame. Right. So I'm just going to take this... I'm just going to show you on this. This is going to be one of our teaching oh, cool. things in a minute. But when I stitch, I stitch in the middle. I start in the middle, not stitch in the middle. You're a middle stitcher? I'm a middle... I start in the middle, so I fold it in half, wherever the salvage or anything is, and give it a little thumb crease. And then I fold it in half again and give it a little thumb crease. And then that's where I start is, that's my center. Can you see it from where you're at? Yep. Okay, that's where I start in the center. I always start in the center. I can't, I've tried. I'm not smart enough to do up in one of the corners and start that way. I have to start in the center. So if I'm starting here and let's say it's, the pattern's gonna go this way, I will just roll this up so that I'm not touching the stitching side I'm only touching the back side, and then that's how I stitch in hand. Now, whether that's right or wrong, I don't have any idea. But I just stitch and keep my hands just like that. I have both this finger and this finger on the top. I do not do the sewing 
is it called the sewing stitch where you don't go back? I go in and out. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what the it's called when I you. I think you think you were right sewing. Yeah, and I don't do that. I've tried. Um, I can't get my stitches consistent, so I'm always doing pull up, pull down, pull up. So that's what I call stitching in hand. Okay, so years ago, probably in the 90s, I went to Connor Prairie, which is a living museum museum in Fishers and if you've never been there you need to try to go it's amazing uh, but they had a cross stitch weekend before there were ever such a thing and a friend and I went and they showed they taught us how to finish our pieces without having to send them to a framer well one of the things they did and if I'd have thought real hard I'd have brought it in with me you take your piece of fabric and you you fold it over like a piece of foam core and I'm going to pretend like that paper is a piece of foam core, okay? You, you with me? So you take an applique needle, I mean applique pen, they're the itty bitty, little bitty short pens, and ever so often, about every half inch, quarter of an inch, you insert an, an applique pen into the foam core. And you do it across one side, and then you, you tighten it, and do it on the other side. So by the time you get done, it's not lacing, you don't lace, no lace. Yucky lace, don't like lacing. Um, you can glue the back. I should probably, this would be a fun tutorial to finish a piece oh, no, of a cross small, stitch yeah, on a small, on a cross small stitch. something because I can show you then how I glue the back because you, when you've pinned it, it's still sticking up, you know, it's still going to stick up on the back. So I'll show you how I take care of gluing that. But I've tried the lace method where you lace it clear across the back and try to pull it tight. It's so inconsistent for me, and it does not work. It does for some people, but not for me. I'm not good at that. So now we're going to, there's been questions about Newcastle, Edinburgh, Cashel, and, uh, what's the other one? See, I've already forgotten what the other, oh, here it is. I thought they were all beers. <laughs> okay, so 40 count, like this is where you got to write this down, 40 count linen linen there's a type of linen called newcastle newcastle linen is always 40 count it's never 36 it's never 28 it's always so if you see a pattern or a chart that says you need 40 count newcastle that's only anything that says newcastle means it's 40 count so this is a piece of 40 count newcastle and it's always linen it's not even weave, it's nothing like that. It's got schlubs in it. And if, if you don't know what a schlub is, there's several schlubs on this piece of fabric. That's where there's, um, uh, the fabric has sort of clumped and it makes little, it makes inconsistencies in your fabric, makes it look more authentic, more aged, because that's what they would have worked with back in the two centuries ago. So um, this is 40 count Newcastle, just a piece of, stuff this is a fat eighth that we have so I want to show you that now I'm going to go to 36 count oh, where's it? 36. okay 36 count Edinburgh 36 count is always Edinburgh linen if, if it says Edinburgh it means it's 36 count okay just I'm trying to memorize that I know what Newcastle is, and I know what Cashel is, but I, the other two I kind of get confused sometimes because I just use what I want. If it says you use 40 count and I don't have any 40 count and I don't want to mess with going and getting some, we have 40 count here, but if I don't want to mess with it and it's just a little piece, I'll grab something out of my stash and use it and um, change it to whatever size fabric I have. So the count on the fabric is not as important to me. I know it is to some people. I know there's people that do 56 count. I know people sometimes only want 14 or 16 count. Whatever floats your boat. Doesn't matter. Whatever. Deborah likes boat. that 14 count. Yep, Deborah's a 14 count girl. I think she walked out. I think I just heard the door shut. No, I'm here. Hi, Deborah. Say hi. 14 count's wonderful. <laughs> She's our personal shopper today. Um, okay, so this will be, oh, I went to 28 count. This is Cashel. This is all, the, Cashel is always 28 count. Is that a town? Because the oh, last two were towns. So. Newcastle Maybe. and Edinburgh are towns. I don't know if Cashel is Cashel a town? I don't know. I'd have to look that up. But it's still got schlubs in it. It's not an even weave. Cappy, is Cashel a town? No idea, but I'll find out. Cappy's our man of the hour, woman of the hour. 
So anyway, this is Cashel, 28 count, always Cashel. Cashel is always 28 count, okay? Now we have uh, Belfast. Belfast is a town. Belfast is a town. Yeah, Belfast we is a town. We got Edinburgh. Yeah. We got Belfast. You know it's Edinburgh? It's, it's a Edinburgh. borough? It's Edinburgh. It's a borough? Well, I don't know about that. He's been It's not a burg? No, nope, it's Edinburgh. You should hear us. <laughs> I've been there. The Scottish, I love to listen to them talking about And they have bagpipers everywhere. It's like, oh, there's a bagpiper, and over oh, there's a bagpiper, and it's amazing. But anyway, this is... Um, this is Belfast, and it's always 32 count. So it's still got schlubs. I like I, can, schlubs. I just can't help but think of beer when you talk about these. What? Is there a Belfast beer? Well, there's a um, Guinness Stout. I had Guinness Stout in Ireland. Oh, I'm jealous. I, I don't like beer in general. And then we go to Ireland, and they have to have this Guinness stuff. I still don't like beer. <laughs> I took a bite. A bite. I took a drink of you it. You took and a it was bite like, of beer. Oh. You took a bite of beer and I it bit you back. Beer. And they don't really have an age limit on drinking. So I was with a bunch of high schoolers and some college age kids. Bunch they of, all had Guinness. Bunch of people out of middle school. Yeah, they just. Is it, is it a town? I'm waiting. I'm looking. I'm looking. Whatever. Okay, so this weekend we are having a retreat. Not that you guys can do anything about this. Oh, Cashel is a town in Ireland. See, they're all towns. Oh, my gosh. Did you go to Cashel? Tipperary, Ireland. I did not. Where? Tipperary, Ireland. Tipperary. Population 4,422. So Cashel must be a place where they started making linen. I small don't Small town, 4,400. Yeah. But it makes what? sense, Irish linen. Yeah. Huh? I'll be darned. We, Irish linen. See, we've all learned something new today. So that's amazing. Um, now, what else was I going to tell you? Oh, yeah, I was telling you about we're having a retreat this weekend in Shipshire. I want to go. At Farmstead, is it Farmstead Hotel? Maybe. Anyway, there's there's people talking behind me. Um, but we're having it's just a do whatever. You, what is it? Farmstead Inn and Conference Center in Shipshawana. Farmstead Inn and Conference Center in Shipshawana. I have I have to have people because I don't do details and all these people take care of me. Anyway, so and we might have Stacy Nash coming this fall, so keep your eyes peeled for that. And one more thing, I had a brainy idea, but I'm not sure how I'm going to do it yet. I have old charts. People donate charts to us all the time. Um, they could be dimensions charts. They could be from the 1970s. We get magazine cross stitch magazines. We had all this stuff. Well, it's like, I don't, I hate to get rid of it. So we're going to try a lending swap library kind of thing where you bring in a chart and then you can go look at all of our charts and pick one because they're free. So you'd leave a chart and then pick up a chart. So we'll see how, I haven't quite worked out all the details. Just kind of keep your eyes peeled for that. So. It's a work in progress. It's a way. Right. So. I'm going to ask you to tell me when you graduated from high school. Say graduate, so that'll help us find your, what do you call it? Comment. Entry. Yep. yep, entry. Graduate or graduated in whatever. I graduated in 1976 from Westfield High School. I'm a shamrock. I'm going to my alumni banquet tomorrow night. And so. That's cool. Yeah. So, um, if you will leave that comment and use the word graduate, then we'll pick somebody for a $25 gift card for the next floss tube, and it'll probably be in two weeks-ish. Mm -hmm. Depends on when Peter's not busy. Mm -hmm. And it'll look like this. I mean, it'll come with a little piece. It'll yeah. come in an envelope like this, and it'll have a sleeve. receipt in there to, um, to shop. But $25, you know. You could buy a lot of charts with $25. So, anyway... Happy stitching, you guys. I uh, hope you have a great couple of weeks. Get your gardens planted. And be nice to someone. Love you. See you. Bye.